from the day 324 of Shaped by the Word. I'm Paul Kemp here with the Kresge's, Matthew and Catherine, <laughs> and also here with Cindy. And you might expect the word Cynthia, but her given name is just Cindy. Cindy. So you're here yes. with Cindy. Mm-hmm. Not plain Cindy, plain but Cindy. here with Cindy <laughs> <laughs> as well. Yes. We're <laughs> right in the middle of chapter 11, which is a very significant chapter uh, in John's Gospel as Jesus reveals himself you know, to Martha as a resurrection in, in the life. Uh, not simply one who would be raised and not simply one who uh, would raise others, but he is the very heart of everything that we expect from God as he restores all things. And it's found in in a person, not just simply a work of God. And as we've talked about a lot in John, the signs always point, you know, to a deeper reality, and that deeper reality is Christ. Mm -hmm. And in him we have all the gifts of God without him. Uh, we experience none of the goodness and none of the, you know, grace of God or the ultimate, you know, grace from God. So we left it kind of a poignant place, you know, yesterday. Uh, Jesus is weeping with the people who are mourning Lazarus' death. And, and the crowd looks and says, see how deeply he loved him. But some question him. He said, really, you know, couldn't he who opened the eyes of the blind have been here and, and have done something? And, and of course, Jesus uh, does do something. So we pick up in chapter 11, beginning in verse 38. But before we do, uh, as always, let's um, offer ourselves in the moment uh, to the Lord, knowing that we, we come to Scripture to know this person, Jesus, who is the resurrection and life, to be formed by him, shaped by him, and forever changed by him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before we read, Matt, do you mind lifting us up with a word of prayer? Yeah, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word and for prayer. Thank you that we can um, approach you and, and and hear from you, draw near to you with the assurances that you'll draw near to us. And, and Father, we thank you that you have spoken to us through your word. You've revealed your heart and your character to us through the person of Christ and, and through your word. And and as we read this, um, Spirit, would you would you give us wisdom? Would you lead us and guide us? Um, help us to to see Jesus in, in all of his glory and be transformed into his image. Uh, thank you for the the privilege of, of knowing you, of walking with you, um, enjoying you. God, be with us as we um, enjoy this time together. Uh, would we enjoy you? It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. John 11, verse 38. And Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead men, by this time there's a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. It was almost time for the Jewish Passover. Many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus, and as they stood in the temple courts, they asked one another, What do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees had given order to anyone that found out where Jesus was should report it so that they might arrest him. You have a wonderful miracle of you know, a man who was uh, deeply loved, 
uh, not only by Jesus, by, by the community that he lived in and by his sisters as well. Many people had come out you know, to mourn his, uh, mourn his death, uh, raised you know, from the dead as, as a vib- vis- you know, visible you know, expression, not only of the power of God, but the mercy of God and the deep love and compassion you know, of the Father. So you think everybody's going to be happy at this moment, but the, con- you know, the conflict intensifies even more. Uh, we need to somehow not only silence you know, his voice, but silence you know, Lazarus' voice uh, as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it is both you know, climactic and anticlimactic you know, point in, in the Gospel of John. We realize how deeply entrenched uh, you know, the Jewish leaders are mm-hmm. in their opposition to Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's you know, fascinating to me when kind of backing up to this whole s- the story as a whole, like, you know, Jesus knows exactly what's about to happen. Even his disciples, you know, we kind of laughed about it yesterday. It's like, oh, okay, they're going to stone you. I guess we're all going to die. Like, I mean, this is a moment that, that really intensifies. I mean, Jesus knew that this moment as he goes mm-hmm. to, to raise Lazarus, that from that point forward, I mean, mm-hmm. he, he knows where he's headed. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it's interesting to me in the midst of all of this, kind of all these circumstances that are swirling, you know, you have Jesus ministering to, to Martha and to Mary, and I'm sure that, you know, so many other people there. But he, in verse 38, it says, Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. You know, that, that Greek word, we don't really know how to translate it. I'm kind of afraid to, like, show Jesus as angry in that moment or indignant or, you know, whatever that, however we want to translate that. You know, but he sees that what, has, mm-hmm. what sin has done to the, the very people he loves, to his very creation. And he is. He's deeply moved. He's he's angry. And and I, I love that portrait of Jesus. Again, that multifaceted portrait where he knows how to minister to Mary. He knows how to minister to Martha. He knows how to, to, to disciple his disciples. And, and yet at the same time, he, he doesn't just look at, at, at sin and death and, like, he's indifferent towards it. You know, he, he looks and he sees what it's done and and mm-hmm. and again he is the powerful one mm-hmm. who knows who knows how to to minister to us who, mm-hmm. who knows what sin has really cost mm-hmm. uh, and knows what eventually he will do to to rescue us and redeem us from it and I, so i just love that that portrait initially um in, in our reading today yeah. uh, matt's referring to you know the word uh, for you know the deeply moved can be uh, you know, was angry, and uh, many translators, you know, translators boldly go there. And, and his anger is not, you know, with Mary, Mary or Martha or even, you know, with the crowd. You know, his, his anger is this kind of brokenness, mm-hmm. the kind yeah. of brokenness that, uh, you know, death has produced and the kind of uh, way that, you know, sin, you know, not only leads, you know, to physical death and to, uh, you know, lack of wholeness, but that, uh, it, it ravages you know, people in deep in a deep way, and of course, this is what he has, you know, come to de- you know come to defeat. To think about the fact that I mean, Jesus was there; he was the Word that was there at the beginning, mm-hmm. and to to be um, a part of creation, to to be as you know, Colossians says, just like he is holds all things together, and in him all things were made and created. And I'm totally misquoting that, but. You know, not totally. You got three or four of the words <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. um, so just to think about, th- he's the one who was there, and sorry, that moves me because to to see just the ravages of, that sin has created, mm-hmm. um, the brokenness and pain that is a result of the of the sin that's entered into the world. Yeah. I mean, that would make one angry. <laughs> you know, to to see what you've made. I mean, it makes me angry when I've cleaned the kitchen and it's undone in the next five <laughs> minutes. Right? <laughs> like that brings about some anger <laughs> in me. So I can't imagine. What now, now wait a minute. Who could possibly yeah. be doing this? Undoing the kitchen in the next five minutes um, <laughs> or, 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 yeah. but, uh, no there, there's no doubt and, and of course that's what you know martha recognized in the first half of this chapter you're, you're not only the messiah the son of god but you've come into the world mm-hmm. uh, you have entered our pain and you have mm-hmm. entered our brokenness and you have brought a, a healing touch and not only have you brought a healing touch you've brought a redemptive touch mm-hmm. And, of course, that is his word to her. I am the resurrection and the life, and whoever lives and believes in me, you know, will uh, live even though they they die. 
-hmm. but uh, yeah we we do you know need to realize that there uh, you know the God in his holiness is is doesn't find it you know doesn't find sin amusing or sin mm -hmm. you know is, is is kind of you know just a little light thing uh, he vehemently hates it mm -hmm. and, and and so that that's a source for both anger and love yeah. mm -hmm. and and both of those are working together in a beautiful way you know in who christ is there is you know a nice piece of humor you know in this <laughs> uh whenever martha uh you know, finally jesus is about to move you know to do something and he's mm -hmm. told her he will do something about her brother and they said, uh, roll back the stone. So, oh, wait a minute. It, it might stink, stink. Yeah. you know, just a little bit. And I've always loved that in the uh, New King James. For by this time, Lord, he stinketh. Uh, <laughs> you know, which is, uh, but. That's true. That's true. The fourth day of I'm not sure I want, I'm not sure I want to deal with the mess. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I, I'd like, you know, everything to be, you know, in my time, in my way. And, and I'm not sure I want to deal, you know, with, with the mess. And, 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 of course, Jesus said, didn't I tell you God would be glorified in this? In spite of the odor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to love all the details. I mean, yeah. I, I could just imagine, you know, Lazarus coming out and going to hug Martha. And Lazarus <laughs> is like, man, Martha, you stink. And she, no, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, uh, just all the details. Uh, and, and I, I mean... I love that John gives us all these details mm -hmm. because we, we know, I mean, he's already told us exactly why Jesus is going to the tomb. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he could have in passing just said, and so Jesus walked up to the tomb and called Lazarus out. Mm -hmm. But instead we get these details of, of you know, Jesus deeply moved. Mm -hmm. Martha's, hey, there's going to be a bad odor. Mm -hmm. you know, these details that help us not only mm -hmm. enter into the experience of it, but also to see the heart of Jesus in the midst of it, you know, as he's interacting mm -hmm. with others. So I, I love these details from John. They're mm -hmm. not just there to fill space. In, in the Gospels as a whole, you know, present, you know, Jesus is very human. The disciples is, yeah. Yeah. is very human. The situations that they face are you know, very similar, you know, to the ones you know that we do you have to like you know what john does uh you know with caiaphas who was a high priest mm -hmm. you know is arguing back and forth and of course you know their concern is if everybody believes in jesus they're, they're going to lose you know the things that are so comfortable to them they're going to lose their identity as a nation they're going to lose you know their temple and uh, they never considered you know what they what they might gain a whole new identity in christ and a whole new way of god being present you know, with them in the person of Christ and through the person of the Holy Spirit, you know, as well. So what they're clinging on to is, and what, you know, the other gospel writers, you know, will call, you know, old wineskins, mm -hmm. you know, that need to be, you know, that need to be burst. But you love, you know, John's theology of Caiaphas, Caiaphas the high priest. It's going to be a lot better for this one guy to die than for the nation to perish. And of course, he didn't mean that in a you know in an intensely you know salvific way. He just meant in a very mm -hmm. and it, it'd be the best thing we can do right now is just wipe out every memory of him, and then we'll we'll have a nation that's in slavery, still languishing along, and, and and that's probably you know our best hope. But John says he spoke truer words than he mm -hmm. even knew, and he even attributes us to the work of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you crazy. know, working in him. Mm -hmm. He said the truth: it is better for one man die than for the nation to perish, and that's exactly. Whatever. The heart of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Far better for me to give my son, uh, and, and of course that's the heart of, uh, you know, John three. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him would never, same word, perish, uh, but have everlasting life. So the gift, you know, that we find in Him. So just a nice, beautiful mm -hmm. little piece there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your mercy and we thank you that you chose for one man to die rather than for all of us to perish. Mm -hmm. And Father, we thank you uh, not only have you given us eternal life, you have given us abundant life, knowing that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you have come or your son has come that we might have life and have it in all of its fullness. We thank you that you are angered um, by the ravage of sin but we thank you that your anger has led you to restore in us everything we've lost the ravages of sin thank you for your grace and for your goodness it's in your holy name we pray amen mm -hmm.